All right, so we're doing season three of Telltale's The Walking Dead now. Frontier. We did, we did, we did season one, we did season two. This might be one video, this might be di separate videos. Who knows at this point? Yeah. And we're, the, the this is kind of going to be a different structure to the other ones, because with the others, we kind of, we went episode by episode. Yeah. And kind of like, had kind of also yeah, rated well, episodes and kind of had like a look at. Instead of episodically, we're doing this as a sort of summary, right? We're, this is basically a kind of an overall kind of an, V, kind of view it's a review of it yeah and i mean i think the, the reason that is is because we don't actually have too much to say in terms of like kind of character analysis even if i wanted to do it the way we did the other way in terms of breaking down every every little scene i don't think i have the capacity to. i can't remember much yeah because a lot of the scenes are forgettable and i don't want to put myself through the strain of bringing those memories back up right i think i think what it's trying to say we should, yeah. What we are trying to say. What we're trying to say this is, is a, this is a majority majority shared opinion mm. on this season. We we don't like it. I don't think I don't think there's I don't think it's going to be a controversial statement to say that it was it was it's probably the weakest of probably. the Walking Dead. Probably it is the weakest. It's 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 one of the weaker uh, kind of Walking Dead products that are out, and I mean. I, I do I like you know I do think there are certain things that are praiseworthy. I'm not yeah. I'm not we, we completely. Will, look, we'll try. We will try not to make this bias. There will be props where props are due. Whether that is one prop, like whether that's us being nice about it. <laughs> a once. single prop. We we will um, like I will try to to look at it from both sides because because that's only fair. It's only right. Yeah. If, well, if anyone does like well, it. I think I think in terms of back, I think I want to start with some backstory first. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea, actually. Which is like, this was this was, oh, I want to say twenty seventeen, twenty sixteen, sixteen, twenty sixteen, and this was around, this, this was when like Telltale was in like full output mode. Yeah. So I want to say the well, Batman is out. Batman out. They did the Batman Telltale series. They did Guardians of the Galaxy, Minecraft. They were doing so much shit, and I think maybe kind of the quality of the season dipping a bit could be it's probably correlate to that because i think they put a lot of their like well, a team it, on the yeah, batman series and it, and it also just quantity over quality for them yeah to getting to they had to because they were getting so many offers the, de the for, demand like, different things. yeah the, like their output demand was, was high so they, they were like oh we games out they wanted to make revenue profit while the while the, the telltale hype was real yeah and um and it led to a new frontier overall being rushed and and um you know just un unfulfilling and i mean uh, and i mean yeah like 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 we did say there there isn't it isn't like the worst thing ever it's playable but <laughs> you can pick you can walk around in the game it's we'll give it that <laughs> you can you, you can, could buy the game right now and play it it is a game that's that a, you can it's a thing you can it's do it's a game that you can buy yeah. and you know that that's, you can purchase it and you know whether you it got made it, it happened. Which is, like, you know, that's kind of an achievement that yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. got something made. Yeah. But I think sort of the main issues are... So, so, what did this come out, what, two years after season two then? Yeah, I want to say it. Two years. So whilst they did have more time from season two to three than they did from one to two, the external factors, which we briefly mentioned... Yeah may have contributed to, well, to why yeah it was i mean even though they did have uh kind of i think i w i think they probably would have had a longer development time i think cuz they just had so much shit yeah. going on that yeah. like they couldn't fully f they couldn't put all of their best people onto no they couldn't put all the eggs in one basket which is a shame considering that walking dead is their flagship it's a shame yeah it's like it's that's their big series but i think maybe the reason the reason they ultimately went for that was because they had faith in this new story that they had because Season three is so vastly different to other seasons mm. that it's alarming. Well, it's an entire it's an entirely new perspective because it isn't even because um, even though two changes into Clementine's perspective, it's still about Clementine's journey. That's yeah. what these games have all have. The, most of the games are about is about Clementine. Clementine's journey and kind of like her growing up and like the game Clementine's kind of development is more of an awkward side story. In this one, yeah. In this, any the ever, rather than any sort oh, of like main all, focus. It almost feels like they went for this sort of block blockbuster story, which everyone be thrilled about due to. Well, there's a lot of things. Well, basically, there's a lot of things different in this season. Not just the story, but from the game graphics, the design, mm. um, the action sequences. Mm. It's very, very different. Um, 
and it's almost like they they thought maybe they thought that the, the Clementine ship was going dry, mm. and they wanted they wanted something brand new and fresh, something that would catch the eyes of of people watching. Um, and you know that's it's a motive, it's a fair enough motive when you put it like that. But did they? But but it was executed extremely poorly. And what you got was a lacklustre result. Well, I, th- I think they probably... I think they probably just kind of mixed on what they wanted to do. And I think that kind of that kind of leads into how, like, the game opens kind of poor... Like, in terms of Clementine's story... Honestly, I, I think or the opening... Or lack of. Well, I think the opening for Harvey is pretty good. Like well, that. I'm, well, yeah, I'm just going to come out and say episode one is the best episode of the season. Oh, it's, yeah, which I think is, it which is. Which isn't me... That's not a big praise. It's not high praise, but it's like... It, but, but the, 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 it's kind of the one that gives you the most episode, to work yeah, off Yeah, well, with. episode one is the best. Um, the opening scene is, is okay. Like, consi- we, well, what we've got to remember is we have to take this as... Because I could go on for ages about how, oh, this is it's ridiculous how Clementine's story wasn't continued and this new family comes and makes things complicated. But, but if I'm going to do it fairly and I have to do it as if, okay, this is a new story... And I've got to critique it like that. Um, the new, the new, the first scene is good. Mm. It is good. Well, it's 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 because it kind of establishes David David and Harvey's conflict. Yeah. Because Harvey's late to to like his father, who's yeah. like dying. Well, I think it's fairly good at establishing what the characters are gonna be like, mm. and you kind of have this cool sequence of events where. Well, you're, you've got to remember you're back at the beginning of the apocalypse. Yeah. You're basically giving you're basically getting backstory to where this family is going to go. Because because they think because they think that he's like because when he dies and they're all kind of sad about it, but then he wakes up again and they think, oh, he's still alive. Yeah. And it's like that that is that is a scary thought to have. That's yeah. like a good concept. Yeah, no, for it, it, like it, that zombie kind of starting. It's almost like a horror scene. It because it because and it's they like, have the, the title card going on. It, it, it did feel very movie esque. The mm. way they went about the opening scene, and I didn't, I didn't mind that. But the problem with it is that Everything from there after. on out, from there on out, it was a downhill roller coaster. Well, and I think, I think one of the problems actually, it wasn't even a roller coaster. There were no twists and turns. This was a straight, straight dive down into the depths of, of. Well, I think one of the issues immediately is that, like every other, every other, we were talking about this a little bit, but every other Walking Dead game starts with you entering a new group. Like, you are the outsider in the group, and then you enter it, and then you can kind of you, make your own relationships. You make your opinion about what group you're with, yeah. as the character does too, because you are seeing... The group as they the are. The group as they are, and you are the character who's... The character's also seeing the group for the first time. And you, you get... You it, work it out with the character you're playing. Yeah, and it, it gives it gives you chance to roleplay. It gives you chance to be like, oh, I want to treat this character this yeah. way. I want to treat this character Whereas like Whereas when in this story, you've got already established relationships. You, yeah, you start out... You have no control as to... Where it starts off in terms of um, how you start close out you are like with you start characters. out like five years into the apocalypse, so you've been you've been with the this group for five yeah. years, and it's like there's no room. And it's not like you're it's not like you're an outsider coming into this group. You are your family. Well, you're basically the leader of the group. Because yeah. I mean, Harvey takes he's basically responsibility the leader, he, for, for like you've already taken responsibility for your actions, and like yeah. the whole the whole kind of moral of the story is like Harvey learning to become like. A responsible person, but he's been a responsible he, person for, for five, five years, years. For five years, like he's taken care of a family for that long. It's like yeah. he's kind of already reached it's... that goal. Well, I think in the story maybe would have benefited from maybe having it take place earlier in the apocalypse, and he, yeah, even but, though that would have messed up the timeline. Yeah, well, basically, like in short, it shouldn't have happened. No, in short, cause, because it was never going to work, and it couldn't work. And it, it shouldn't have happened, but well, they went for it. But I think it would it would have worked if it was truly standalone. Like they've had to have it be so far into the the apocalypse so that Clementine can be at the appropriate age. Yeah, well, you if think it, they should have gone maybe like Michonne. Michonne or, kind of like a mini series set. If they had, early if, days. if they were set on this and they had to go with it, then yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm personally, I'd rather it just wasn't a thing. Thing, but like, I feel like that would have been a much better because then you would get to see their reactions to the very beginning. Yeah. Of it. Well, you get to grow. You get to grow a relationship with Javier as he does. Yeah. With and he Kate. and at that point, he's a straight. He's kind of estranged to the family. Right. He's kind of a semi outsider, but by like the he, time we actually yeah. start the game, he's been with and, them for and, years. And it's like the game wants you at the end to think, oh well, Javier is a real responsible man now. He's a father figure. He's a, but he's but he's basically been a father figure been. to these kids for five years. He's basically been um, with Kate for five years. <sighs> it's just a total mess, and I. I'm, and I think we should get into some more specific things now, because otherwise I'll end up 
talking about yeah things that I'm not wanting to focus on. All right, baby, how th- are you? I think first of all we should talk about. I briefly mentioned it earlier with the the change in sort of game mechanics. Game mechanics, yeah. Graphics design. Um... Well, I think well because because kind of from from one to two from season one to season two, there is kind of like a change in kind of gameplay. Be- very slight, but yeah, there is. Because there's more on in two. There's more of an emphasis on like dialogue scenes and kind of like kind of quick time event kind of button mashing kind of yeah, moments buttons, yeah basically pro- predominantly button mashing yeah as right. opposed to the original which had more kind of focus on puzzles yeah but then the third one kind of it goes in goes into the action area like leans into it kind oh, of yeah, heavily it, it, it's it, they treat the game as if it's an action movie don't yeah. they they treat, yeah. they treat it as if you're watching like a karate well they, they try to make kind of harvey look badass like when he's like fighting tons of zombies, and which doesn't like, have an effect on you because it kind of misses the point. We haven't ex- we haven't experienced Javi becoming a badass. No, but you know, I think I think we should stick with the the graphics thing though. Like season one and two, whilst they differ in um, the game mechanics slightly, and even the artistic like style of the characters is a little different, but they but you can see that they're with that same style. It's mostly similar, yeah. I'd say season two just looks a bit more mature. Like I'd say the the characters have slightly more detailed faces. It's more defined, but yeah. the style is still there. The, Similar, sti- yeah. the style is is there. Ex- or, you know, you can you can tell it's a Walking Dead game instantly. Yeah. Whereas season three takes this whole different approach, and the characters look incredibly different. I'm not going to sugarcoat. It's one of the ugliest games I've it, ever seen. It looks ve- It's it's so weird because. You can clearly see that they wanted to. They wanted to stay within the style. They didn't want to make it um, a hyper realistic game, like you see, for example, The Last of Us. Mm. But but at the same time, they tried to. They you can tell they wanted to make the characters look more realistic whilst staying within said style. But what you ended up getting was, was this ugly Mish-mash, sort of uncanny yeah. valley sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> Thank and, you. And it's just. I, I think the best way to describe how the characters look is like they're shiny plastic dolls. That is that that is also like the lighting is really weird because you it's, it's actually off putting. Everything times. looks everything looks like kind of unnecessarily shiny and kind of murky all of a sudden, right? And it looks like it looks like there's been there's been a, a filter has been put on it. It looks like there's been like a, a brown filter that's been put on everything. And yeah, like everything just looks like disgusting and brown. It's and like, this sort of like weird brownie orange tint throughout the yeah, game. Yeah, that's the color scheme is brown and orange, and it's like the, yeah. the original like one and two didn't really have that didn't kind really of. Have- well, rusty. It. it didn't no. have like a rusty aesthetic, but with this, like I feel like everything just kind of looks like garbage. <laughs> like there's no kind of nice yeah. looking vistas. Everything yeah. is like an ugly town. Like Prescott. But the thing is, I think they want it to look ugly. Like I get what they're, they're no, trying. No, no, they to... don't want it to look ugly. I, they want it. They want you to be like, wow, it's looking more realistic now. But, but what you're getting, but it does the opposite effect. They're so shiny that it's unrealistic and it and off putting. And it's just and there's way more. There's way more graphical errors because there's way more times in this season where like the character's eyes would just be cloudy and like you couldn't see their pupils yeah. like i got that a few times where like their eyes would just be kind of like white they wouldn't be pure white but they would have like a little white tint over them yeah and they would look like they're out their eyes are like they're like partially blind when they're talking and like and even things well, like the, the camera fact- being out of focus for like a couple seconds where like when the scene starts you just see the background and everything in the foreground is blurry. Yeah. And it's like, you didn't have those kind of ish, like visual Vision. issues no, with the first no. two games. Like, it's very but it's odd. like, this is a game that probably has a bigger budget than the other ones yeah, and, and has had more time. And you can tell they've, they've put more time into the graphics because otherwise the shift wouldn't be so No, they dramatic. wouldn't have made such a big shift. Well, I mean, based on playing the game, because, it's I mean, clear Michonne... that they, they had more time, well, they spent more time putting effort into how it looks rather than the actual plot. Well, because I want to say Michonne came out like not even that long ago not even at that, long at before time, yeah. and it has almost the exact same style yeah, as that, season that one, two that one looks and fine. it looks better yeah the, this one it's just, it's it's so weird it's like they they've just got this sh- and they're always glowing like they, like their skin has been oiled down to perfection know, they all look oily there's no sun you're in the apocalypse here there is no moisturizer well, maybe they're trying there to make no b- b- for some reason for some reason, they look like that. I was thinking maybe they're trying to make it seem like it's hot, like the temperature is hot. But well, like, that's what I was thinking with the then brownish temp- yellow tint. But then temperature never plays into the story. No, it doesn't. There's never a moment where they're like, "Oh, it's so hot, we're running out of water." 
That yeah. never plays into the story. It's not like two yeah, where it's we, like the cold. We get, I mean, we get the impression, it. obviously, that they're further south than they were in the second season. Yeah. But but at no point does the does the heat hinder them. Well, no, it doesn't hinder them at all. No. Yeah. That that so that kind of leads into the bigger issue is that kind of like survival. Lack has, of survival survival instinct. has become less of, of a necessity big deal. for them. Because especially especially like especially in two, but also in one, there is such like an emphasis put on resources like the lack of resources like a good section in um season one if you remember is when he's like oh i've only got like seven bullets and you'd like go up to the stairs and you have to shoot them and there's yeah. actually only seven bullets and another one would be when he's handing out the food rations as well yeah and it's like and in in season two you've obviously got like the whole last whole of episode four and five is them just looking for food yeah like that's the end goal it's not like yeah. this big conspiracy in carver's camp you know they're getting fed yeah um in the cabin because like every cabin thing... they go hunting it gets explored you learn where well, you see the hunting scene and it's like there's and it's like there's such there's such an emphasis put on like the struggle because, to survive yeah because the game developers know that we're in the apocalypse here. yeah they're never going to forget about the the almost inevitable and continuous struggle of surviving in a world where food is no longer served on a Guaranteed. plate you know and the, th- and the thing is like it's because it's like food is never re- even really i don't think food is ever really brought up like because i know in the there's beginning there's one scene where i can remember well that the, i re- the one scene i'm thinking of is when he's like he they arrive at the junkyard oh, first. the yogurts and stuff and he's like, okay, and he's so like I, I don't remember what they are and he's game, like oh yeah. should we should we go get but that, that isn't treated as oh we need to get food now it's more treated but as can also... we have a treat and yeah stay but it's, yeah it's like it's, it's, it's they're not even that it's, like ecstatic to see it it's it's yeah. more just Oh wow! Well, yeah, what a treat, you know. Yeah, let's have all this yogurt, man. I do remember one. So, if you haven't seen food for weeks, yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. be like fucking grabbing all of it. I mean, maybe that's meant to imply that they're fine as it is, but how are they? It never gets explained. No, their food situation never gets. You know, they never shed light on it. Hmm. I mean, I think I remember one other scene where it's Joan and what's the name of the other um, leader of Richmond? Clint. I am so surprised. You remember that. <laughs> I am actually. Clint. That's impressive. Thank you. Um, but yeah, if you remember when you meet them, Joan has a cake, and he has like a he has like a, a spinach, and then you have to make the tough decision to decide which but one. But once like again, more. it's like a luxury to them. Maybe that's to be fair. Maybe that's meant to uh, symbolize that they have it good their food situation but that's never a relief for harvey yeah but we never we never really find out how their food production kind of works it's just kind of like you know we have everything well, they say, we need well, all here. they say is clint is involved in yeah. yeah and it's like with the saint john's you get that they're dairy farmers and that yeah. they are on a dairy farm and that they would get yeah so like when when people would go why do you have all this food to give us it would make sense because yeah. they run a dairy farm and even what's well, like whilst well, clint is in like what he's they're in the middle of a city like yeah. where where is he farming yeah, and it's also you never see any scenes of him you never operating really... in the in that sector. And that's the issue because in an apocalypse, the main issue should be survival. Although otherwise, and if it isn't, then it takes you out of the reality. Yeah, because it's like what? Where is? Where are they getting? What why? am I? What am I watching? I so feel like they wanted to make this a blockbuster movie as opposed to an apocalypse. Well, I mean, that's why there's such an em- oh. emphasis on like these big action moments, right? Yeah. Where it's like where it's like guns are shooting everywhere. There's like tear gas being thrown, yeah. and it's like when you stop and think, where where is all this coming from? Yeah, and it's like that that has been an issue sometimes in other Walking Dead stuff, where you think, oh, this is, he kind of just well, has they... like a lot of ammo, but it's like you don't think about it because you're so invested in it. But when you're like kind of in season three, you're kind of just like walking about, just like oh, what's going but on? Also, just like from um, thing to thing, you you think about it, you th- actively think, where is all this coming I th- from? Yeah, well, I think with the other examples you just gave, yeah, you're wrapped up in it for the story or whatever. Mm. But also at times they'll they'll just have a small hint at where stuff is coming from, mm. and that's all you really need. You know, we don't need to go into the the big details. But with season three, it's so alarming and so obvious. That you do just question what's going on. Like some of the things that they, some of the things and stunts they do are so unbelievable, hmm. and they try to they try to mask it by giving you these cool sequences where you're pressing. Because hmm. there's more of this than in any other season where you're pressing this this weird combination of buttons, buttons and it's meant yeah. to feel all cool and stuff. But they they it you can tell it's so drawn out and they they try they use it so often that I don't care about it. Yeah. And, and then yeah, once again you just think about okay, where are they getting all this stuff from? Where's he got the energy to do all this shit? And how, I mean, how is he? How is he running up walls? How is he? <sighs> Pro, yeah, well, that, I was gonna say, probably the biggest offender of this kind of like actionization of the series is Jesus, and I Such mean, a weird sentence. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> to say. that Jesus, that son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, well, like, 
if you don't know, Jesus Jesus isn't like an original character for the games. He's in the comic books as like a character way into the apocalypse. Yeah, and how, how many years into the apocalypse? Is that roughly? I don't know. Maybe like almost a decade. Yeah. Must be. Because like late, late, late. And like, <laughs> it's in, and it's and it's just like, why? Okay, first of all, why is Jesus here? Because Jesus serves no purpose. It's so unnecessary. In the story. So uncalled for. And like his his whole like him trying to be cool, like jumping off walls and like kicking zombies in the head and killing. It's like, it's so it's well, so, just unrealistic. Out, it's and unnecessary. outrageous. It's outrageous. There were actually times, and I think a lot of people like Jesus as a character because they 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 think he's cool like how the game wants you to think but there were genuine times where i was playing this with another friend of mine and we would physically laugh out loud when he did some of these <laughs> some of these stunts because well, it's so absurd it, it's so absurd like it, he's got he's got like those but he's got those binds and he him. just gets out and he just goes he just immediately like, if you breaks them down, yeah and it's like at one point he runs up a wall and one point he side kicks his way into a locked door you gotta respect it He's just he's just that cool man. It doesn't make me think he's cool. It makes me think how the hell is this possible? Maybe he's actually And it, and, and, Jesus. It's, and it's just another one of these factors that just sucks me out of The Walking Dead. Yeah. Cuz I'm cuz I'm I'm pl- I'm not playing The Walking Dead anymore. Well, it, this game has no kind of immersion or atmosphere, which I think the other games get well is they immerse you in the world with the music, yeah. the locations. With this there's nothing and that really like, gets you invested. Action scenes can be can be good and they can be important but so you, long as you care about the characters involved yeah, in well, said that, action scenes. Yeah. And and quite simply, we don't care about these these characters. I mean, yeah. And I mean, like, do you, do you want to talk about that a bit more, or have you got something else to say first? No, new characters is probably a good thing because I good think thing to segue into. Yeah, because I mean, they don't do great with the new characters. I think is the issue. Well, the thing is, they they introduce. I was gonna say, oh, they introduced loads of them. In fairness, season two did that as well. Mm. But it but it's all about. It's all about justifying your decision to include loads of characters because introducing new characters has its whole set of problems. Hmm. You've got to you've got to establish relationships with them. You've got to care about them. You've got to have enough scenes where you're getting to know them. You've got to, just, their you've got to kind of justify why they're there in because, the first place. Why are they still sticking with yeah, this group? Right. And and season two added a lot of characters, but you cared about pretty much all of them, whether it be you hated them or you. Or you liked them, you still you still had a connection and, to them. And well, it, it was a consistent group. Yeah, like people died off, but it was like a consistent kind of core group. Whilst I feel like Hovey's kind of things, <clears throat> he constantly separates from them. Like there's loads of times where he will just go off on his own little thing to like fuck with his brother or something. Yeah, well, well, they, they, I almost feel like they maybe it feels like they introduced even more characters this season than they did the last. Maybe they didn't, but it feels like it because you get so overwhelmed with it. And we've already touched on why why Javi's family is an issue in the fact that they've been with each other for five years. We don't know anything about them. Their their relationships and their statuses are all already set in stone. But then you can come to, to the other characters who aren't involved in the family. Um, let's just name some. Eleanor, Trip, Ava. Conrad. Uh, Conrad. Um, yeah, pl- characters like these. I'm playing, bro. Who just have such less of an impact on you than any of the the, the cabin crew for example in, yeah. in season two they are so undeveloped and i mean I, and i mean like some of them i like like i like um i like uh kate i think kate is probably uh one of the stronger characters yeah well, well yeah well credit where credit's due yeah she is Kate, and then i mean gabriella was cool i guess for like five seconds before she got shot in the head yeah gabriella was a character who had more potential than gabe but they kill her off, and I th- I, f- I feel like she could have had. I think I feel like her. De- I don't mind her dying, but I feel like it would have it would have been even more impactful if it happened later on, if we had more time with her. Yeah, I I, I have no problems with them killing her the way they did in the sense yeah. that it shocking was, and it sudden, was, you know, horrific. But it was the end of episode one where you know at the beginning of any episode one, you're still trying to get the gist of who the people you are. And so you've already killed off like a core member of the group within the first episode. And And I get it, like Javi's been with her for five years, that is a big thing, but we haven't. Mm. The player hasn't. So maybe if you did that later on in the thing, that would have had more of an impact Mm. on the player. And it's teasing you because they know that the player is going to like her. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, fuck you. Which I guess was like trying to be like kind of surprising, but it's like I would have preferred if you kept her alive. I found it more annoying than Mm. than, like um, shocking. Because we weren't as invested in her yet I was just annoyed because out because obviously I knew that these two kids were going to be somewhat important 
but out of them at the time, I much preferred. Is it what's her name? Is it Mariana? Mariana. Yeah. Mariana. Yeah, I much preferred her than um, than Gabe. But I think yeah. I said Gabriella earlier. <laughs> That's why I threw me off guard. I was like, wait, is she called that? Yeah, because I was confused. Is it Mariana? Gabe. It was Mariana. Gabriella. Yeah. You sure? I said okay. Gabri- Gabriella okay. by accident. Okay. Confusing with Gabe. Yeah. God, yeah. It's, well, it's easy to get mixed up. Don't worry. They're just so unlikable, I think. Well, no, no. They're either unlikable or forgettable. Unlikable, forgettable, or un- or undeveloped. You mm. know, every character has potential, but it's, the potential doesn't get tapped into enough this season. At all. Well, I think I think probably the, one of the stronger characters is David. I think David is one of the stronger characters. Like I think, and I think the issue, one of the big issues, is that they they couldn't figure out what they wanted to focus on, like what kind of story they wanted to focus on. And I feel like the stronger stuff is the brother dynamic. And I feel like if you had David from the beginning, you could have had like a whole seasons of build up between them. And yeah, like the tension growing between them, so that that like their final confrontation could have been better, kind of like with the season two kind of build up there. But it's yeah. like you could have had that between brothers, but it's like David doesn't really like ho- is, isn't e- is not isn't really even a core part of the group for a lot of it. No, because for a lot of the time he's sort of off doing something else, or he'll only join you for a bit and then leave, and it's like you're missing out on all this character stuff we could have yeah so much of it that you miss out on and they they try and um patch that by giving you these recurring flashbacks mm. which i guess is their way of saying oh so this is why their relationship strained oh this is why which is to me just a pathetic way of doing but it i'd rather i'd rather do it like i'd rather in the moment do it in the moment and yeah, like so would I. have have the time to d- do it so at my I. own pace over like a st- i don't know it just yeah because none of the other games felt the need to do flashbacks i mean other than the beginning of season two well, it's almost like they felt they needed to because there was so so much context missing yeah so they're like okay we've got to we've got to have another flashback and there's so Which, much it's just another reason why it was unnecessary to have us following this family it's such a poorly structured kind of story yeah i where, mean like it feels like we're having we're having these flashbacks all the time and then also at the same time as they're doing this they have to balance clem's story and it feels like they almost didn't want to bother with all, clementine it's almost like clementine is like including her in the story is a chore to them hmm. that's how it feels when you play it anyway it feels like she's an obstacle because yeah, if you think about it it's like you... they were so determined to set this new story into it but then but then they forget that clementine has to be a part of yeah. it why does she have to be a part of it because people are only playing it for clementine. if they if they hadn't if they hadn't like if they hadn't include like clementine if you had never played any previous walking dead games yeah. You just see Clementine as like this. Why are they cutting to her? Yeah, yeah. Like, what's all this backstory? It, just, it about? doesn't feel like she belongs in the story. No, which is a real shame because whenever she's on the screen, she's the person you you care about yeah, the most she, because you followed her story. Even though she's at season. her weakest here, she's still the better the better character yeah. of most of them. Yeah, and she. That's just another problem in itself is her lack of screen time, her lack of presence, and, mm. and just lack and like, of importance. Why aren't we playing as her? That's what you find yourself. I actually remember saying that out loud several times. Yeah. Why aren't we playing as her? Because it's like Harvey. Harvey is like fine. Harvey's like a fine character. But that's he's... what he's just fine. He's just he's just that's it. But he feels like such like a he feels like he's intruding on this story. I feel like that he's boring. We have played two seasons of Clementine's story, and now we're suddenly like that suddenly become Clementine's story suddenly become like a yeah. side mission. Yeah. And 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 it's not like it's not like Harvey grows on you through loads of scenes with Clem because they don't have that many. No. And the ones they do have feel pressured. They feel forced. Like, there's certain scenes where they try and make Javi come across as a brotherly figure to her. Tr- I, feel like, ask... I feel like they're trying to make him like Luke. Oh, definitely. That's the and parallel. it's like, it doesn't work. Well, they, they try and make you... They try and make it so Clem goes to him for advice and stuff. It's like, why would she? But she wouldn't. She hardly knows this man. Yeah. And she's like... she's like I feel like the way she's portrayed in season three is that she's much more like cynical and alone yeah and it's like why would she just randomly trust harvey because he says he has a family i feel like clem this is like the beginning of clem becoming super independent and careful with who Mm. she talks to who she interacts with who she opens up to but but then they go against their that sort of key value of hers just for the sake of having you interact with harvey and and it's like the the reason why she trusted luke in season two is because luke literally saved her 
and she was like bleeding and she really had no other choice like Luke literally Lu- saved Luke her Luke and Pete came to her when she was at her absolute worst and in this like she just meets Harvey and like at first she's like well if anything she saves Harvey yeah and it's right? like why does she feel like she has to she come does... along to help them you're telling me Clem hasn't come across people like this before yeah and and and, well, and she's just gone along with their stories and gone along mm. to where they're from and stuff that's like that's not true no. that just can't be true and I mean even having I mean, Clementine wandering around by herself is is an issue in itself and I mean I don't Which agree we'll later. yeah I mean I don't even agree with like the idea that sh- that like AJ isn't even in it for most of the story no like why miss out on all of this he's potential development he's a side character he's a background character he pretty much season. is he's basically an extra his, his he's set decoration he's sort of like the fact that he's in it is important because because it offers Clem motivation to get him back, but he's not in it. You know, you don't see any... You have hardly any scenes of Clem and AJ, like, together. You get these flashbacks, which they did for Clementine as well, but it doesn't... It's not enough. It's not enough. And and it's just... It's a problem, man, because Clem... You don't care about Clem with any of these characters. You don't care about Harvey with any of these characters because there's no intimate scenes between any of them at all. And if... Well, maybe there is. Maybe there is, but not enough for it to leave a last. Well, they just aren't written well them. enough. Because the dialogue the, isn't in, the intimate scenes are bad and and lacking in quantity. Hmm. Like for example, I can name so many characters and compare them to characters from season one and two, which are just so so like undeveloped in comparison that it's sort of bewildering. Honestly, like Trip, for example, compare him to any season two cabin character. Compare him to Better. season one character. Better. <laughs> Trip is the greatest character ever put in a video game, bro. It, you're the boss, Harvey. You're the boss. <laughs> Fuck's sake. That is fu- You have a kind of a vendetta against Trip, and I'll never understand. No, I have it. a vendetta against all of them. Pretty much. Honestly. Well, I, mean, I hate Ava, so. The thing, the thing, I think, honestly, Trip's probably the most likable out of them. But, but, but the things that happen to Trip and the things Trip do. Do. Yeah, the things he does. Uh, cloud my sort of perception of him. Because although he's an. You can tell he's just a nice guy. The things like the fact that he supports Harvey for so long and the fact he's so welcoming of him when he arrives at Prescott makes no sense. Well, he is he isn't welcoming of him at first. Is he because I remember they kind of have conflict. He's like, why are you causing trouble in the Oh, good point. Good the point. Bar. I think what I mean to say is that the fact that in the aftermath, aftermath, of Prescott, yeah, sorry, not the welcoming, the sort of after the whole uh, shootout goes on attack. Yeah, but I still I still like him, though, because I feel like he's just He's just attaching himself to Harvey because even though everybody else from Prescott said that is kind of like the last. But Harvey is almost responsible. And there's Eleanor, I guess. Eleanor is still kind of there. Kind of there, yeah. Mid, but, you know. You don't care about them. Trip, my boy. And the thing is... I do, ca- yeah, yeah, no, go, I do kind of like the little relationship things. It does feel out of place. What? Well, which when he asks, he asks Harvey for, for advice. That doesn't happen enough, though. Yeah. I think it happens like twice. I, I don't mind that quite. as well because, I, as I said, like... Previously, I like scenes where you so just you got you got to fly for it, Harvey. I get to <laughs> fly for it. No, it's Harvey who's giving the advice to Trip. Trip, love is complicated, just... man. <laughs> That's terrible, bro. You know what? You know what? The, the, maybe, well, there's not enough intimate scenes between characters, and and the ones that are there aren't good. Aren't good because of another problem, which I think we should get into now, which is dialogue. You're the boss. You're the boss, the, man. The dialogue in this season compared to the other seasons is so... I'm trying to think of an adjective, honestly, that actually... Bad. Yes. Bad? <laughs> That's, that, that might be enough. It's on the level of, like, strange... Not strange. I was thinking... It's on the level of, like, 13... No, wait a minute. Playing it's on the level of, like... Life is strange. Life oh, is strange. Oh, I, I, I haven't played that game. Have you not? No. That game is terrible. <laughs> that game sucks. But it's got like terrible, do- and it's like this. I don't know what I don't know what happened to the old writers. Like I don't know if this was like a new team of writers or if they just were just tired, or if they were on like other projects. Because I, f- I feel like they put a lot of the good people onto the Batman uh, game, but like the dialogue is terrible. Well, listen, right? Like the the the, the sort of quality of a, a a voice actor is that they have the skill of communicating a character's opinions as if they're in the same room as the character they're speaking to, as if they're actually in that, like, situation. But in this season, it sounds as if you're listening to two voice actors doing it over a call. Well, I mean... Not even a call. And the issue is, like, the dialogue is so bad. 
that like even the greatest voice actor of all time could make some of these lines not sound good. Yeah. Like some of it just does not work out. Well, and we there was the issue, of course, where we talked about this earlier. Where it was the issue of like, this wasn't an issue in the other seasons, but in this one specifically, there are times where, like Harvey will either you could get you get given an option, and Harvey will just do the option, but not in the way that you intended. Yeah. And I feel like a majority of people would have expected him to act differently. Like there's the scene with the. Uh, Kate and David. Kate and David in the kitchen, and it's like... Tell him off. Tell him off or kind of back off. Or, yeah, or just stay out of it. And it's like, tell him off. Most people would think, oh, when Harvey says to tell him off, Harvey's going to say, hey, David, why are you treating your wife like this? Defending Kate. Defending Kate. So that you hope to choose that decision because it will make you closer with Kate because she appreciates the fact that you're defending her and standing up for her, right? But then the option to tell David off, instead, Harvey says... Me and Kate were talking. Kate's gonna leave your ass. <laughs> and it's like, what? In what? In in what world is that? What the player wants when they select that option? Because in a way, that line alone not only is you telling David off and getting on his bad terms, but Kate disdains you for it. She literally comes at, as she, as she should, by mm. the way. Because if that was said, you would react like she does. Mm. Why would a pl- why would me as a player want to choose an option that? That negatively affects my relationships with both the people in the situation. Yeah, you can't even pick a side. That wouldn't even be a thing. It's so, do you know what it is? It's because the option is so vague. Like, but at the same off. time, the idea you do get from its vagueness isn't carried out. Yeah, and I feel because like they most, just go along with most people else are anyway. gonna kind of interpret it the way we did, which is defend, defend Kate, Kate, tell off. But it turns into David. telling off both of them, pretty much. Yeah. It's like what? It's like I don't know why they would write that down. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And not only does this happen multiple times where mm. you choose something and Harvey goes off on a tangent about something else, the delivery of the lines isn't good either. It, it isn't sold with any conviction, I don't think. No, he always... It sounds forced... And it sounds out of place because because obviously they have to record... I don't know, I imagine, like, tons... You know, loads of lines for different op- dialogue options and stuff. Mm. But the, the dialogue options that, that are consistent and will happen no matter what, if you were to choose something later on, which is, you know... It, uh, whether it be Harvey being more aggressive or whatever, or even if even if not, even if you choose something and he sounds aggressive, it just sounds so out of place because he'll have go he'll have gone from having a calm conversation with someone mm. to straight up r- ranting about you know whatever it may be, and it, just, it sounds so out of place and so in like uh, is it insincere or unsincere, inauthentic, unauthentic, inauthentic, insincere, whichever way, whichever way you want to put it. Yeah, man. I mean. That's how it is. That's just simply how it is. Like the, the the delivery of the lines sounds so out of place and rushed and forced, and ugh, laboured. Honestly, I just. Do you know what? At least Joan's thing. a good character. At least Joan's a good. You want to go into Joan already? Is I that don't what know. You she's wanna, pretty do good you really, character. Do you really want to go into? Joan? I don't know what you're implying, Edward, but I'm pretty sure Joan is the best villain. I'm gonna have to have like a half an hour segment for Joan. Carver is mid. Carver is <laughs> mid, bro. We're gonna talk about the villains in this in this season. Well, villains is 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 villains plural because there are there are smaller villains, but we'll mostly be talking about. Well, the main antagonist is is Joan. Joan. Now, Ed, if I know, you remember her, well, Ed, I know. Do you... we have to remind them who she is? That actually I'm might serious. be the case. Well, Joan is the. What is she? Leader. No, leader? no leader. No, because there's four leaders. She's one of the leaders. Three leaders. Four. Three. No, no four. Doctor Lingard as well. God, I forgot the guy who gets high. <laughs> the guy who gets high just randomly with no backstory ever explained. Anyway, four are leaders. Yeah, four. Uh, Joan is is like I think she's in charge. Communications, of... like with other with other um, settlements. Yeah, yeah, settlements, communities. And like the, what I think what they're trying to do with Joan is they're trying to do like a, a a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing where she starts out like inconspicuous, but underneath it all, she's kind of she's like. You know, she's secretly really bad and, like, crazy evil. Yeah. But it's, like, I think the main issue with Joan is Oh, that... as if it's meant to be a twist when you find out that she's done yeah. something bad to the group. Yeah. And, I mean, the main issue with Joan is that when she is revealed to be the villain, she doesn't become intimidating. I don't care. It wasn't even a shock. I was, I was just... Wait, who is this again? Joan. Why is she on my screen? <laughs> Wait, who is she? I genuinely had to... I think I knew that she was a leader of Richmond, but I remember like, genuinely thinking, what, 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 what was she doing? Oh, she's communicating. Yeah. 
That shouldn't be the case with the game. No. That shouldn't be how it is. It should be you should be so immersed in what's happening that you just know. But I genuinely didn't. Well, the the issue is kind of like she she yeah she doesn't have any presence like Carver. When Carver entered a room, you'd be like, holy shit, this guy's gonna talk. Okay, we gotta listen to what this guy's gonna say because he's gonna have he's gonna say something with authority. And then even in season four with Lily. When yeah. Lily shows up, it's like, okay, we got to listen to well, what she has to say. I think was Joan, I feel like, it doesn't feel like she has, she just, she poses any threat to anybody. Yeah, no, she, I, th- I feel like you can go down two routes with villains, right? I feel like you can either have that one villain, who in this case would, is what they tried to achieve with Joan, where you have a character who is meant to not look villainous through their appearance or whatever, but the, the whole villainy in their character is that later on it gets revealed that they've done something bad and then there's a shift in it and they suddenly become the, the major antagonist and then it's a big deal. Or you can go down the path of, almost like they did with Carver last season, where you've got a character who you who looks and acts as if there's something wrong and you know that they're, they're up to dodgy, shady business, but it's a matter of what are they doing and how bad mm. is it. And they went down the former. They went down the route with the former and... Um, and it didn't and it didn't work because when you have the switch which is where you're sort of given the reveal that they're a bad character you need to have this switch where they where they become almost a different character completely you know mm. the things they say the things they do they become a lot more powerful and and uh seeking vengeance and stuff but Joan's delivery of lines her variety of lines her her appearance the things she do, they don't they don't really change no so you're stuck with just a, the, the, the 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 shock value is just completely negated because because she isn't she's still not threatening yeah you know and it, it's not even like they go into much detail with what she does you basically just learn that she's been raid raiding right yeah places and that's why i think joan is the best villain because <laughs> you see one of the raids <laughs> Yes. Well, there's more issues with with just that. It's mostly like motivation wise. Is well, yeah, like, you never reveal with the backstory. And like, she, and motive. this is even this is an issue with just the new frontier overall as like a faction, as like a group. Like, what is their goal? Like, what what separates them from any other random? What's group? the story behind the What's symbol? What's with the branding? It's like, I get that it's like a loyalty thing, but like it hasn't worked yeah. a lot of the time. What are the motives? What are the goals? Why do some people get it on the neck and some people get it on like their upper arm yeah. where they can cover it up? Is it almost ritualistic? Is it part? Is it some sort of? Cult well, I thing? thought. I thought maybe. Or is I, it just a friendly community? When I played it first, I thought, oh, maybe this is going to be revealed to be a cult thing. But like that symbol. Well, when I saw the ta- when I saw like, it, it's not even tattooed, is it? It's like it's a scar. Burn it's like it, burnt right? into you. So it's like, I oh, th- these guys have got to be like. Oh, I was getting vibes of a, of some sort of cult. But it's like they no. It's like they literally well, just. The symbol never gets explained, which is just lazy story writing. Why well, would it's... you show? Why would you even show it if there was no? If we were never going to get any sort of. The reason they do it is it. just to like show is to like show like loyalty, right? To be like, hey, I've gotten the willpower to do that or whatever. But like, it clearly doesn't work because Clementine's gone off, and then Joan's also gone off. So it's like yeah. clearly this doesn't work. Anybody can like suffer a momentary amount of pain yeah and then just go undercover yeah like that is not a good test of loyalty but i guess that's but they're idiots the fact that new frontier is supposed to be like a super well organized group which has like have, they've got like farms they've got cake they've got loads of people it's like and they've they got vegan meals and they can't even yeah they've got vegan options <laughs> and they can't even figure out basic shit like they seem like idiots they're not threatening at all the only one who's like remotely threatening is david but like, it's not like David kind of carries. He's not even meant to be the main antagonist, for God's sake. Well, he, he's. I think he's supposed to transition to the main antagonist, but he's his not, tr- his transition to villain only happens like in the last couple minutes yeah. of. And it's like if you were gonna make him the villain, it should have been he should have been behind. Kind you of the race. You should have just stopped with the whole Joan narrative. Because Joan is a terrible character. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it, she's a terrible character. <laughs> Nothing about her is is threatening. Is interesting or intriguing yeah. or like remotely she's the kind of original. Of a, of a dreadful character. Everything about her. And I mean, like, it's it's just it's just like they why? even try to make it. They even try to keep you like oh, with on the edge of your seat stuff. Is she alive? Is she not alive? Because I think there's a choice where if you go down a certain path, she just she's like MIA yeah. at the end of an episode I feel like that that would have worked comes if we cared about Joan yeah if Joan was imagine if Carver was missing in action you would be like holy shit what, what happened to this yeah. guy what and like for the rest action? of the is season would be like is he gonna come edge, back yeah. but Joan, like you, one she doesn't come back two I wouldn't have cared even if 
even if I yeah, because what's she gonna do? She's gonna show up and just and like, but, and also the the issue gets, is, and the thing is, she gets all of her sort of um her puppets to do all the, the nasty work. Yeah, I was for gonna her. say that because she doesn't have like she doesn't do a lot of like the physical intimidation. Like compare Carver and Joan, they're both they're both the leaders of certain communities, mm. and while Carver does have his sort of like entourage of um of bodyguards and 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 loyal soldiers, if you can even call them that, mm. for example, Troy, mm. um. When it comes down to the nit and gritty, Carver's doing all the dirty work. Because well, he's he, out there. He's the one proving a point by by nearly beating Kenny to death. He's the one Reggie. proving a point by getting Carlos to slap Sarah. He's the yeah. one proving a point by murdering Reggie. But Joan never does any of the work for her. No. I mean, like, she stands next to David when he's going to get hung, but it's like not, she's not hanging him. No. She's, like, standing next to the executioner, like, he's you're going to hang him. It's so I'm like, shit. what? <laughs> it's so shit. And it's like, how can anyone, how can anyone in, in, in the, the problem with Richmond, right, is that we never really see, like, the scale. Like, we never really see the city in action. Because, like, a lot of the time, the streets are just empty. And, like, we're just yeah. walking around, there's nobody around. Yeah. Like, the only time when there are a lot of people on screen is the execution. And it's like, why is everybody coming yeah, out to watch cool. this? And yeah. it's like, how are people... This isn't the Middle Ages. How are yeah. these people who lived in a civilised world just openly okay? Like, a majority of them are cheering on him being hung. And even if you think he's a traitor, why would you be like, oh, this is okay? Yeah. Yeah, I know. You, you, yeah, if you're just a bystander who knows nothing about it... Yeah, why would you be like, you why be, are we doing this? You'd be protesting about it. Yeah, and it's like, I feel like they wanted to try and make it... They tried to, like, Dramatic. add some political intrigue, too. I think they were trying to, like, what, with, with the, the factions. Yeah, yeah, factions. And they were trying to go, like, yeah. oh. But it's like, they really don't even focus on it. Well, the thing... Yeah, like, they don't, don't really learn, like... All you learn is what... Why they're at odds and what the yeah. people think of them. You broadly get an understanding of what their roles and duties are. But never do you get to see any... Um, an insight into how they the power, like the power and struggle, stuff, and it's like which uh, takes away the political element. Yeah, and it, that would have been that would have been good if they focused on it entirely. But <clears> like they said, there's yeah. so much going on in now, the story, like, they can't focus yeah. on it. Now some credit. They can't focus on Clementines. They can't focus on like yeah. the the brotherly relationship. Away. They can't focus on the political kind of aspect of it. Like where where credit is due though, um, the whole I like the whole thing where with Ava and Trip, whoever you choose to save is the one who dies. I like that as a concept. Mm. I like that as an idea. I think it's it's shocking. It, 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 it evokes a reaction out of you. But the problem is well, it, let me let me phrase it differently. It would be it would be a good concept put into reality so long as the characters that were facing the the punishment were people you had cared yeah. about and had long scenes with I mean if Car if Carver did that with two characters so imagine if he did that with like um I want to say Jane and Luke but no nah, cuz they're too important for the rest of the seat Carlos and season. Nick or something like that something like that yeah yeah that's a good that's a great example yeah. and then that would have cuz then about. that would have made us hate him but it's like cuz you cuz you got cuz you got so many factors to think about yeah. oh if I kill Carlos Sarah how's she going to react if I kill Nick, Nick Luke. Luke but and it's also like those characters are and you cuz you likeable. care about them and they have character. Because Clem has intimate scenes with them one-on-one -on -one mm. as a group. It doesn't matter. Spends time with them. And, 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 and because of this, the concept is cool and all in season three. But but once again, the execution is lackluster because because you want to you want to care about the characters. But you just you don't really like I get I think most people choose to save Trip because he's just a nice his whole personality is a, a nice guy. But Ava doesn't have enough scenes where you... And Ava's a terrible character. Well, Ava, Ava is meant to be, like, David's side. Well, she's trying to be like the Jane, right? But she's nothing to Harvey. No. And it's like, what... Wait, hang on, I've just... No, no, maybe maybe I'm wrong. What are you thinking? I was thinking, like, why is that even a thing? Because surely Harvey hardly knows Ava. Obviously, he'd just choose Trip. But then I think I remember that Ava sort of comes into the group a little bit before that. It's like five minutes. Well, all she does is she gives she gives Harvey the uh, the bag with the baseball bat. Yeah. And I think she's in it for a little bit, but it's like, like... no scene. And this is episode fucking four. Yeah. We, we're supposed to have had hours of content of us building relationships. Yeah, and it's like, realistically, he would... Why would Harvey even think of saving Ava? I guess to, like, not piss off his brother, but also... He doesn't know Ava. Yeah. And it's like, Ava is a terrible character. I fucking hate that... <laughs> terrible character she sucks bro and like when she's like the w and like they're trying to do like a Jane right they're trying to do like a Jane where she's like a badass 
and she's kind of like a she's kind of like a loner, but she's like she's like five foot. She's like four <laughs> eleven. She's like Clementine's height, and then she has a confrontation with with Trip. And it's like outside. Oh like, no! Oh yeah, you gotta go into this. And you she like, and she's it. like, they're having an argument. And Trip is like, what six three? And he's like, and he's, and he's like, built like a fucking. Tra- no, no, like don't a- go, don't go. He's built like a brick shit house. Yeah. He's fucking huge. And he's like, and he's like, you trying to fuck with me? And then <laughs> she, she's like, and she pushes him, and he like goes back like that. And then he comes up to her again, and then he, pu- she punches him. <laughs> she has to like jump to punch him because he's because she's so short. And then he falls backwards and like collapses. <laughs> no, it is. She punches him enough to fucking knock him off his feet. KOs him pretty much. So knock off, I'm assuming, like a 150 kg man. And it's like, what? That isn't, that doesn't even That's make sense. out of the sense. realm of possibilities. Yeah, That's I'm sorry. Realm, it doesn't matter how strong she is. She isn't even like, she's maybe half his height and a third of his weight. And she isn't even that like. Doesn't that just go against physics? And she isn't even like a big muscly that kind of like. That goes against biology. That literally goes against. That goes against your uh, feelings. That goes against your facts, flipped hard. I'm so I, I actually can't believe that. Isn't that? But it's like, but it's like, but the thing is, right? With you know, in like Last of Us Two, right? You got Abby, yeah. who's like built massive. Oh yeah, but that makes sense. I could believe her that yeah, she yeah, would knock out a look man because she's got huge arms. But it's like Ava is like designed as like a tiny a little miniature... character. And this is the I don't issue, even right? think Jane would be able to knock Trip off his. Feet. I think Jane could. But well, well, she'd have a better chance than than uh, Ava. That's Ava, for sure. Yeah. But then here's the issue, right? They want you to like like Ava, and this is our, This is the most. This is the worst part, right? Because AJ gets taken away from you against your will, and then Ava, is, is, if you if you act any sort of hostility towards that decision, Ava is like, you really are a fucking child, <laughs> aren't you? And it's like, I'm sorry. I uh, yes, I am a literal child, and you were taking away my surrogate son, <laughs> and what? I, you're upset that I'm acting a little bit... Up- and he's like, come on, Clem, why don't you just understand? It's like, what the fuck are you doing? You're what? taking away a baby from what's, a teenager what? and you're upset that she's having a negative reaction what, what to that. What is there to understand? It's so stupid. And then she comes to you and she's like, oh, I can't... I, even though you acted immature, here you go, here's your shit. I'm like, get out of my oh, fucking just face. Like a hand out? No. Like, why am I going to shake your fucking hand when you stood there and let my baby get taken? You supported the decision to take him away. She's such a bitch. Like, why at the same And time? we're supposed to care. And that's David. David is a scumbag. Why am I supposed to like and care about what David well, thinks? Well, I don't, like... I don't think I chose to say goodbye. No, no, I, I, I didn't choose to spit in David's face. So I think I didn't get that scene. But I've seen it happen. But that's so, so disrespectful. It. And it's messed up. And it's like, why would she not have the slightest bit of sympathy, understanding... What is it with... As what? to why Clementine might react that way. What is it with, with characters being, like, bipolar in this season? I know there's that there's a lot of that isn't there. Trip. You come into his town, right? Prescott. Within 24 hours that place is getting shot up, destroyed, people are evacuating immediately, and he has no problem with you. Mm. In fact, it almost strengthens the relationship between you. You're, he sees you as a brother for I some reason. I guess at least I guess at least Conrad no, no, but then, has some sort of conflict. Yeah, I guess. But then Trip, um what's the thing that he gets pissed off that you did? Something with Eleanor or something? You know when he's pissed off of you before you... Oh, oh, you didn't tell him that you shot Conrad. Oh. Okay, that's pretty big, but... That's fair. But that but that he gets so angry about. But the fact that you probably killed more of his friends in Prescott... Let's mm. not get wrong. Conrad's probably a good friend of his. Mm. How many people died in that in that shootout? A lot of people, In the probably. fallout. Mm. And he's just cool with you. But then, but then for the sake of the plot, it's like... What the hell, Harvey? Harvey, that was messed up, man. But anyway, you're no longer the boss, Harvey. You're not the boss, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that line right. is dog shit. No, just bipolar. Another, another bipolar character, Eleanor. Eleanor, God. She actually be cool with you the whole time, right? She flirts with Harvey a little bit in the first episode, which she I was does. like, oh, is that kind of implying a love triangle? She does, and then I swear she just snitches on you. Well, she, she, oh, cause... because of Conrad, she snitches on you too, and it's like. Why would she... What is going on? Why would she risk, like, getting her, her like, ex-boyfriend yeah. in trouble and, like, these kids in trouble? Why would she risk that? And do you know what? This is part of... I did find this out the other day, but this is part of cut content where apparently originally, um... What's her name? Eleanor? No, the villain. Joan. Joan. Sorry. <laughs> Joan. Can you imagine us trying to remember Carver's name? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Who's that guy? Ken, Kenny, Kenneth, mm. Ken. Got a thick fucking skull. Got a thick fucking skull, Kenny. Right, anyway, yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. Well, the, the original idea, I think, was that Joan was going to be Eleanor's mum. I'm not right. lying. 
That was kind Eleanor's of the... from Prescott, though. Well, the, I'm thinking may, the, maybe that would have explained why Eleanor would be more willing to... Right, you are. I don't like that idea, but I think it would have made more sense. I wouldn't care, anyway. But, like, it's so... It's so... It's such, like, 180. And then how are we supposed to forgive her? Yeah. Like, and then she's like, you're and all then, at And fault. then after it... Mm. And then after uh, the zombies get into Richmond... After the hanging shit goes down and David kills, blah, blah, blah. She then, she's then pissed that you won't forgive her. Mm. Bitch, what is going on? There is, no, by the way, this could all be justified with in-between scenes. Mm. There is no in-between. No. She is one side to the, and it's the same with Trip a little bit. Uh, you know what, Trip? I'll, 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 uh, I won't say him for this. Dap him up. But Eleanor, Joan, all these fucking characters. Ava. Ava, yeah, Ava. I, honestly, it's it's fucking shit. I was gonna say David, but that kind of makes sense because he is he is kind of supposed to be like that. Yeah. Because I his, I do think there are there are if they had a little bit more focus, and like I said, maybe if this was, if this was just like, if they just kind of got rid of all the like the unnecessary shit, if they just focused on the brother dynamic, I think it could have worked if There's they too were many like dynamics. if they were two side characters in like a Clementine story. I feel like that dynamic could have worked. But it's like there's too much going on and you been, can't focus on it, it and build been, on it. Um, something happens to AJ. You're playing his Clem. You've got to get AJ back. You meet a, a group along and the way. I meet a new group. And let's say that's Harvey in that. Well, that was, there's that no was way kind you of my be, idea. Yeah, 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 well, there's no way you should be Harvey. No. No. Because Harvey is... And obviously Harvey is like... I guess he could be kind of interesting. But the only reason people like Harvey is because you play as him. Yeah, I don't know. So he's you. Yeah. Oh, I like Harvey. Yeah, cause fucking Harvey, you are making... Harvey's him... just like me, man. I don't know what to tell you, you. You can't even use the argument of, yeah, well, I'm playing as Harvey, so he makes this... Harvey doesn't say the shit you want to say! No. So, fuck him. And he leaves very little room to, like, roleplay with, like, what God, you want him to be. God, characters are so fucking obnoxious and annoying. Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabe. Yeah. I fucking hate Gabe. I, I kind of understand what they were going to go for, right? They were trying to go for, like... We'll give kind imagine of well. Imagine if you were a teenager going through puberty during a zombie apocalypse. No, but he's just a teenager going through puberty. Mm. There's no apocalypse like in between. Well, and well, I I feel like, and I feel like, even a child who's going through puberty would have the common sense to do some of the things that Gabe doesn't do. He's been going this through the shit for five years. Like when Gabe, when Gabe just like blurts out that Harvey shot Conrad, and it's like even a teenager, even though he did that to save your. Fucking life, yeah. I think, or Clem. Oh, I can't remember. Fucking. Well, yeah, it was it was it was Gabe's life because oh. Conrad had him at the gun, and it's like, oh yeah, he did. Even a teenager who is like going through puberty and has emotions mixed up would be smart enough to figure out that it's probably not the best idea. Like, I I get what they were going for, and I feel like that could be an interesting idea because like uh, it would be a nightmare to raise. It's nightmare raising a teenager anyway, but in in an apocalypse it would be a nightmare. But like, I feel like they don't do enough to like make Gabe. Likeable. likeable so that those moments where he is acting up makes yeah. you feel like look, more look sorry at, look for at some anti-heroes from other seasons ben nick they do fucked up shit ben, it nick. annoys you but you like them you like them they got some sort of like kind of you don't like gabe they have kind of like an understanding behind their actions which makes so them the romance kind of feels so forced between them oh god that there sucks. is no there is no like chemistry chemistry between them yeah the only whatsoever. reason they get together is because they're just the same age they play cards or some shit yeah no Clem doesn't even play cards I know this game's game. like Gabe's like oh yeah play this card game with me I'm pretty sure that's the only scene where they like look happy talking to god, each other Gabe, Gabe is absolutely just like reading into it way too much yeah he is like yeah. Clementine's just like sure I'll play a card game yeah, and, and then Gabe's like she's in love with me Harvey I'm pretty sure she's in love and I it's know. like bro god Oh, it's so shit. It's so bad. It's like, maybe you could have done, like, a young love kind of they thing. They should have had Mari Mariana be, like, a sister to Clem. That's true. Like a, and, a, a, and it would be a different sister dynamic to that of maybe Jane. Mm, because she's sister. younger. Yeah, she's a big sister. Mm. Oh, my God. And the thing is, like, they did... They <clears throat> kind of did, like, the teen romance thing. They did that better in season, in season four. four. It's done really well in season... It's yeah. done so well in season four. Yeah, and they... So, what the fuck are you doing? She's, like... How old was she meant to be in season three? Like, 14? 14. Fourteen. What the fuck? I oh, know. She wouldn't even be thinking about that shit. Anyway, yeah. Gabe, best character. You know what we haven't? Even, we're an hour in. Do you know what we haven't talked about? What? Kenny and Jane. Oh my fuck! Kenny and Jane. You didn't How? think about that. We need to think about this. We need to talk about this. Disrespect to. This, is, this is a fucking huge problem. Yeah. So the complete and utter neglect of old characters. Well, we his because obviously season two ends. In multiple ways, there were like four. There were like four outcomes. 
And that poses a challenge when doing another season because you have to think, okay. How are we going to appease everyone? How are we going to do everyone's out? How are we going to do four distinct outcomes? And how how the season three writers responded is, let's do them in less than five minutes (laughs) and get them over with. Let's murder them. Let's murder them. Callously, not thinking about it. So I think I, the least egregious one is probably the Wellington one. Even though that that one is also kind of bad because Wellington is built up as this safe place, but it immediately falls to like yeah, a, a, a truck of raiders come in. We're and meant to believe that this place that's fucking probably more barricaded than any place we've ever seen in The Walking Dead. Yeah, game. it's more like fortified than anything. It, but, but these people breach it for some reason. We have, By the way, we have no idea what the conflict going on is. Oh, no. Um, it's just some people are here to steal. Steal, I steal guess. Stuff. I guess. And that that whole sec- that's what really the fuck. How are you losing that fight? Wellington's huge. I know, and I mean, the the only you only ever saw. see the inside of Clementine's room, and I get why. God, I'm, I've just remembered that hat thing as well. But I'll talk. Oh, about Kenny's it. hat. That's so shit. Where they're like, where they're like, grab it, grab and Kenny's, Kenny's grab, hat. You don't. And it never gets implemented. I mean, not not even in season four. AJ should be wearing that hat. He should be wearing Kenny's hat. In season four, that would be so good. Yeah, but I guess not everybody has that hat. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but that would have been something cool that they could have maybe done relatively easily. Simply, yeah. But, I mean... (coughs) But, yeah, that the Wellington one isn't so bad. I mean... Oh, yeah, so we've got four, right? So you've got Wellington, Kenny, Jane, Alone. The Alone one is probably... All of them are bad. But I'd say that the Alone one is probably the least bad of the bad ones. Just because it um, isn't having a, a respected character die. I'd say Wellington is. You think that's... Well, no, that's what I'm saying. After Wellington. Oh, after Wellington. Okay, yeah. Because that one is... They're uh, all shit. Well, yeah, because in this one, she just gets... She gets, like, her... She gets, like, her fingers stuck in a car door. And then she has to rip her fingers off. And she doesn't have any... And then she... That's it. It's like, <laughs> what's the... Po- what? no, I, think, I think it's... So, they're in a car... And then they stop. Or no, maybe they're walking and they come across a car, right? They're walking and come across a car, and then they're they're hungry, right? They're mm. hungry, so they so they stop when they see this car. And Clem puts AJ in the car while she goes to hunt, I guess, or just scavenge anything from this area. And then while she's like lining up a shot at a rabbit, I think AJ just starts crying uncontrollably wow. in the car. So walkers come. As they do. And then you go back to the car, and while you're trying to get AJ out, you slam your finger in the car door, and then you lose a finger. I mean, okay. I kind of like how it customises your version of Clementine, right? Like, missing a finger. That's a good way of saying... And they do and they do. Look how different it. my Clementine is. They do reference is. it in season four as well, which is cool. Yeah. But the issue is, it's like... It's such a... It's such a... A silly way to lose a finger... It's like, could they not think of any other cool way where she could have, like, lost for them? Maybe it got, like, bitten off by a walker. To, oh, yeah, and she had to cut it. That would be pretty cool. Cut it. Or, like, even even if it just got ripped off by a walker, so it, yeah. it bit into it and then ripped it off. Or if she got into, like, a fight and it like got, like, cut off. Defending AJ or something. Or something, but it's like... But she instead, got to... it's AJ's fault that the walkers show up and then she does something kind of clumsy. And she got stuck in a car door. And it's like... I can tell they were just in the fucking whatever it is. Well, I imagine they just had to rush it. They were just like, okay, I don't know, she's You're alone. Like, okay, we've done all the other ones. Um, loses a finger. We've got, the, cool. we've got the car prop. We can't just have her doing nothing. So we've got the car them. model. We've got the road model. What can we animate? Well, uh, I like how they try and summarise, like, what? Three years, two years time span with one scene for that. Yeah, with a flashback. Because at least with Wellington, you can kind of have the assurance that, okay, they were just chilling there mm. for two years. Or even the Jane, so much, even though there's even so the house one, even like, the house one, you could be like, okay, they were just chilling there. Yeah, I guess the fucking one where they're alone. You're telling me you're summarizing three, two or three years worth of survival with that scene, mm. that sole scene. So, I mean, that's like a whole, that's, so se- that's like a whole season of development. That's fucking garbage. I'm sorry, that's so shit. But then you've got the right, best. What's next? Um... I mean, it depends which one do you think is more disrespectful. <laughs> I mean, they're both so they both they're both so disrespectful in different ways. So the Jane one goes against Jane as a character. Mm. Jane, the Jane scene goes against anything, everything we know about Jane, mm. and just throws it out. Like it basically just shits on it. Yeah. And then the Kenny one, the Kenny one is just more disrespectful. Mean spirited. In general, yeah. 
first. Well, Kenny, Kenny's is he's teaching he's teaching Clementine how to drive, right? He's going like, oh, Which look is kind at the way of we drive. Which I mean, like, I guess she might have to learn how to drive to Not drive really. cars. So long as Kenny's there, she won't. Well, Kenny was maybe she's gonna preparing, be there. Well, maybe she's prepared, he's preparing her for when she does, yeah. if something bad happens. If I'm being honest, that's not the main issue here. No. Is Kenny t- to no, to drive? No, no. Uh, you know, and I guess that does explain how she can drive in season, at the, in season three, even. Three, yeah. Because she drives a car, and it's like, if you don't have the context, because oh, how yeah, did she learn? Right. But anyway. What uh, the fuck does that scene happen if you have any of the other ones? Is it just like assume she knows how to drive? I guess so. Well, with Wellington, maybe because Wellington's like all hot shit, maybe they would have the luxury of maybe. being able to teach people to drive. But uh, anyway, yeah, anyway, you're in the you're in the you're you know you're in the car and he's like blah, 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 going along, and is it is it is it Clement is it Clementine who crashes into like a sign? Yeah, post? you have like a button sequence where you have to try and get certain things right, and you fail either way. Yeah, and you sm- you smash into the thing. Fucking you go spinning out of control. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny goes through the window and lands about, what, 10 metres ahead of the car. Yeah. And he's like, is he paralysed then? Oh, God. He, I forgot about that. Yeah, he's like fucking, his he's legs like, are no, broken. No, he's like, Clem's like, okay, let's get you up. And he's like, Clem, I can't move. I can't move my and legs. Like, it's okay. And she's like, no, I can't move. And or something like that. Yeah, he's paralysed. So then the zombies show up, and then, like... I like, how, I like how walkers are just always conveniently lurking around these areas. I mean, yeah. Like, just, like, they're always just a few feet away. Yeah, I mean, they're in the middle of nowhere driving a car, and <laughs> yeah. it's, like... there's like Luckily, there's, like, a group of them who just but happen to be walking around I, I can forest. look past that for the sake of, like... Such a great scene. Drama. Such a great scene. Best scene in The Walking Dead, maybe. <sighs> Sorry, but Kenny was mid before season three. <laughs> That's the best Kenny version. <laughs> season three is... The best Kenny. Speak. <laughs> yeah. But and it's like and it's like yeah he he's there on the he's there on the floor and he's like uh, Clem go run and then he's just sitting there paralyzed and then he gets eaten alive <laughs> oh my while they while Clem and AJ run off oh my God. and it's like what kind of an ending is this and do you know how sad that is for people who chose to be with Kenny because I... if you chose to stay at Wellington which is basically essentially a go- going against staying with Kenny. You get a better Kenny ending yeah. than you do if you go with. Well, Kenny. you get the chance that he survived. But yeah. if you go with Kenny, Kenny dies. It's pretty much confirmed. Kenny gets that paralyzed and eaten alive. Like that's so fucking. I bad. guess to save Clem and AJ, but he would have just died regardless in that situation. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere, was no. he? <laughs> like he just, it was just like you guys can go. Yeah, to... no, no, no. Two, two they seasons, were gonna go anyway. Two seasons of character development just thrown in the thrown out the window. Yeah, thrown out the window. I guess that's why they call it quite. Window pain. Quite. <laughs> What? Quite literally thrown out the window in regards to being thrown out of the car window is what yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's why they call it window pane, but, you know. <laughs> that's an Eminem lyric. I, I'm cutting this out. <laughs> Don't. Don't. That's so funny. Window pane, window pane, like okay, feeling yeah, pain. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So is there anything else to say about the Kenny thing? Well, no, I mean, it's just it's just that Kenny as a character deserves way God. more of a send-off. And the thing is, right, send off. you don't even feel sad. You just feel angry that he died mm. that way. They take that away from you. Like, a character dying of Kenny's magnitude is meant to be this sort of huge moment Event, yeah. where, you, where you're sort of just extremely upset. But they take it away by, by making you angry that he yeah. died in such a... Terrible way. Yeah, like an ungratifying death. And he also looks weird. With Not, the weird no, he graphics. Doesn't look as, he doesn't look that weird compared to Jane. I think he looks worse than Jane. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, I'm going to get this on right now. Yeah. Like, well, they, well mm. they both look fucking shit. They both look dreadful. I'm, God. All right. Anyway, yeah. So. Give me an eye patch. God, let's move. Okay, let's talk about Jane's one now. Yeah. Okay. Do you, so, wanna, do you so, want to do it? You do it. You want me to do it? Yeah, you do it, bitch. Okay. I'm going to have to try and remember it. Um. It's just you three. Nobody has no one, no one's come to move in. Yeah. And if they have, we don't know about it. Yeah. And they clearly didn't stay long. No. God knows how. They didn't take it over. Maybe yes. did Jane just murder them? Who knows? I guess so. Yeah, because Jane, like, let's 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 remember this, guys. What do we know about Jane from where we played up to this point? Woman. She's <laughs> Yes, she's a woman. Resilient. Um, she's resilient. She's level headed. She makes responsible decisions. Takes no shit. She, yeah, she will, well, she'll make the hard, just the hard choices when no one else will. Mm. She's a survivor. She will, she will risk, um, leaving liable members behind so long as the fittest survive. Mm. Because that's all what she's about. Survival, survival, survival. So, what does season three do? What does season three do with Jane? Well, Jane leaves this area 
Well, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. So you're outside with Clem and AJ. How you can see Hal's in the distance. Jane, you have a little bit of shit dialogue. And then Jane <laughs> says, oh, I'm just going to go do something inside, right? So she goes, and you're left with AJ. And then later on, uh, I can't remember if AJ's still in Clem's arms or if she's just put him down somewhere. And, uh... Oh, and another thing. AJ looks a lot younger in this than he does in any of the other ones. Well, well, this is because it would only be, like, a few months. Yeah, like a few months, yeah. Because what happens is she goes into a room looking for Jane and finds her hanging herself. Well, already dead. Well, no, she's a walker, isn't she? She's a walker in a noose. Um... And yeah, so what did I what did I say about what we know about Jane? Well, I think you're missing out a few key details. Am I? The fact that the reason why she hung oh yeah, out. well I thought everyone would know that. I mean, everyone would know that. Not everybody has seen that ending. Oh okay. Um, yeah, that's why she finds a pregnancy test on the floor, and, and it's positive. Pregnant with Luke's baby. Yeah. Which is why she hung herself. Yeah. Because she's scared of babies, remember? Yeah. She's scared of babies. So she decides to So kill she would kill herself. So she would kill herself, ruining the life of Clem and AJ. Because baby. Because she doesn't want to have a baby. I thought she would have tried an abortion at first. Yeah, that would have been fucking hard to watch, but yeah, she probably would, right? Yeah. That's, that is, that's, that's what she would Over do. Over killing herself. And also, I think she would actually talk to Clem about it. Yeah. Why would she conceal that from Clem? She'd be like, I've got a fucking baby in me. We need to get why, rid of why, this thing why now. Why would she not tell Clem? Yeah. That's probably the worst one. For all the Jane Even stands. if you were just going to kill yourself, right? Even if you were just going to kill yourself, why not just why not tell Clem and let her prepare? Mm. You're letting a child walk in on you fucking dead. The person that she's chosen, effectively. Mm. Now she's like, oh, leader. well, maybe I should Maybe I should have not killed Kenny then. Oh, my God. That's why Jane was peak season three. Jane Pete season three, guys. I'm sorry. I wish you could get all these scenes in season three. Oh, God, I just wish that season three <laughs> had even more characters. I wish there wasn't a season four. Honestly, I wish season three just ended. Season three should, <laughs> should just ended on season, season, three. season three. Should have ended on the Jane flashback. <laughs> we can't get any. We can't peak. We can't get any better than that. <laughs> okay, Kenny dying, paralyzed in the background. Yeah, and then like Jane being hung, and then just yeah. like that's it. Wolf and <laughs> over. Okay. It's up to your imagination. You can figure it out. You can figure it out. You can figure it out. But no, oh god. I mean, what else is there to well, say? Well, no, that's well, that's just that's just them shitting on the old character. The legacy, and I know, I know, it's a difficult position, but like, I really feel like you needed to have <clears> at <throat> least, if this was Clem's story, which it should have been, you should have had at least one episode dedicated to whatever outcome that was. And yes, it's more development time, but give yourselves more time. You don't need to make. Like, four games. You failed at that shit anyway. You had five episodes to create this Richmond narrative. And no one gave... Well, some people did, but I didn't give a fuck. Most people didn't give a shit. I mean, it probably... So put an episode towards what... Because that would, that would make people feel like their choices meant something. Yeah. Instead of the game developers just throwing it away. Like, what did people cry for at the end of season two? What did they cry for? What did they cry for? Don't ask me. Nothing. <laughs> they cried for nothing. They cried for Kenny to die paralyzed. <laughs> go away, go. Just run. I'm fine here. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Um Shout out. Season three. Season three. Well, I think <sighs> the new shit too. It's hard to say it's hard to say, you know. What I want kind of I, I do want to say that I think there are highlights in here. There are some highlights. Hard to believe, but there are some. I think I think David is is a good character, and I wish he was in a better game, because I feel like his whole dynamic of kind of being torn between the military and his family, I feel like that could work really well. It's just it's not in a good game, and it's not with good dialogue. Kate was fine. Kate, yeah, Kate's alright. That's my stomach, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Mariana, whatever her name was, she was good for like the five minutes she was alive. Trip's okay, uh, but like they're all okay. Da- David and Kate are the only good characters. I would say Actually, that. I wouldn't even say they're good. I'd say they're. Just, they're I'd the say only, David's good. They're the only characters that would not feel out of place in a good Walking Dead game. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, and I mean Harvey. The only reason you like Harvey is because you either think he's. Oh no, hot. Harvey's bad. I'm just gonna say it. Harvey is bad. 
Harvey's bad. Harvey's a great character. Harvey's not a good character. <laughs> Harvey is... Harvey is Harvey. Like, he has no personality. His personality is... Is just carelessness, I guess. Like, his personality is being carefree and just doing what he does. God. No, I need, I need to mention smoke? this, just in case I've... Shut the fuck up. That's what he says, isn't it? Wanna <laughs> smoke? You just stop smoking weed. Yo, wanna smoke up? <laughs> no, the, the worst... The worst thing... Is what pissed me off with Jesus. I mentioned this because oh forget. yeah, we didn't even talk about that that, mo- that much. Because there's there's the um, uh, Harvey smashes Badger's head to kill him. Oh, we haven't talked about Badger and well, Badger and Max are like no characters whatsoever. Because <laughs> Badger's the guy who kills Mariana, right? And then, and then like shows no remorse. He's like a cartoon villain For who's no like, reason. yes, I love <laughs> killing children, and it's like this is a little absurd. For no reason. Not even Carver was like, yes, I love killing children. He wasn't that no, over the no, top. he wouldn't even kill Clem. Like, he wouldn't kill Clem. He'd beat them, because yeah. that's like that's like a realistic kind of fucked Punishment, up thing to do. Yeah. But like, killing children is just so cartoonish. Killing children and then him just having nothing else. And then him just going like, yes, I love killing children. <laughs> it's like, what? Shut the fuck up. Who are you? And then it's like, we kill him. And then Jesus has the goal to be like, so did you enjoy killing that child murderer? Oh my god! And I'm yeah. like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he doesn't phrase it like that though, does? He? Well, he's like, he's like, are you happy with that? Like, you do you feel better now? Do you feel better that you've taken someone's life? And it's like, I'm sorry, Jesus, but that man literally bragged about murdering children for like 30 minutes. The thing is, they tried to make the badger death scene Moral. similar to like to Carver, yeah, with the like the beat down, yeah. But I didn't care about Badger that much no. because. Uh, he's shit. Like he's not a very good character. And it's like Badger is such like he's such a cartoonishly evil person that it's like why would I feel any remorse for killing him? Yeah. Like when Jesus goes, did you feel good for taking a <laughs> life? I'm like, yes, yeah, I did. It's not the Gany backstory. Sorry. The only thing we know about Badger is he killed a child, and then showed no remorse, and in fact seemed happy he had. Yeah. Because I, I genuinely think a line of his is. I would have shot that girl again. What or you something saying? along those lines. I love seeing a girl with a hole her between her eyes or something. Or something. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? And it's like, why why is Jesus trying to give me a moral dilemma about this when he's literally the most cartoonishly evil person ever? And Jesus is what, you, you sure you like killing? It's like, yes, I did. Yeah. And then David's the only one who's got some fucking balls. He's like, yeah, he was a child murderer. I don't think, I don't yeah. think, what, is he going to find forgiveness, Jesus? ridiculous it's not, like he, it's not even like I'm angry because he's a good villain he's awful well he's because he's boring he's just evil that's it compare like you can probably compare him to Todd from Breaking Bad Todd they both killed the child but Todd it gets explained because he's stupid like he's yeah. actually like he's actually stupid whereas Badger we just know nothing about him why why are we even trying anymore <laughs> what's the point in trying anymore <laughs> oh. I just feel so much emptiness inside like what's so why even try what a mess. What a mess. And it's and, and the thing that makes it such a shame is the fact that... It bankrupt the company. Well, it's the reason that season four is only four episodes. And it was also... It came off the bat of season two. Off the back mm. of season two. What a fall from grace. What can I say? Some people apparently think it's a jump in quality. I don't know if anyone is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if anyone is. And you like a new front it. I actually want them... To, I, I would want... Someone's tell me why they like a new frontier, and I would sit there and listen. It's just because Harvey's such a good character, man. <laughs> it's like he's just like me, bro. He's just like me for real. People just don't understand Harvey. Like... I don't think you understand Harvey. He's just like, like the nat, like the nat thing. Nobody knows what you're <laughs> talking know, about. You fucking say that. Because someone tell me if any, I don't think anyone's watching. We might we might get zero comments on this. Yeah. But if there's one comment, imagine if it's just like. Y'all don't, y'all don't know anything about a new frontier, Yo, man. Yo, clicked on this video by accident, though. Pretty maybe, cool. You know, maybe... maybe. I've played the other seasons maybe, like, tw- th- two or three times, and I've watched playthroughs of them countless times. But season three, I've played through it once, and I haven't watched any playthroughs of it. And there's a reason for that, but also maybe it's because I don't know the ins and outs. Well, I played it three times, and I still don't like it, so... If I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, four, actually. Four. If I'm being, yeah, four. <laughs> you right there? Oh, my God. Because I would have done it. I would have done it. Uh... Shit, I played it twice, actually. <laughs> One with you <laughs> and once by myself. 
What a and nightmare. I tried, that was, I actually had music in sometimes because I was just doing it to like progress. Mm. Oh. See, that's how you know that. Why'd you play it four times? Oh, once when it first came out. You. Once with me, once with your mom, and then once after. I did it with Jimmy too. Oh, did well, you? Well, five times then. You did it with Jimmy. I did. Season three. Without playing nine. any of the others. What did he think? He didn't like it. Oh, it's it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't you know. Should have, you should have played season one with him. Oh, I get bored of playing se- because I've just played. Uh, yeah, so, I yeah, played so true, much of season yeah. one. I'm like, you wanted to start somewhere. And else. it was new. Season three was new at the time. Start with season four. I don't think season four was out even at the time. Oh shit! This was like 2017 or something. <laughs> so that's what we had. So I did not have yeah, the you option. You couldn't start season two. Anyway, is that that's our season three talk? Um. Yeah, that's the worst Walking Dead game. That might be the worst like thing the Walking Dead universe, whatever you want to call it, has ever done. Well. And will ever do. Oh, no. It's one of. Actually, it's still, no, it's still fucking worse, honestly. You think it's worse than... Clementine book. Mm. Actually, shit. Now, that's that's a debate, actually. That's season three, and we'll do season four at some point. Oh, wait, no. Wait. Don't you want to talk about what you would have done for season... Two ending into season three. Oh shit! Do yeah, that's a separate thing though. You can cut this bit if you want. No, I can do this. I okay. can fucking okay, do this. Enough. So, <clears throat> with season three sort of out of the way, and as we know, it was it was a masterpiece. It was one of the greatest games of all time. It won the Oscars, even though it's a game. <laughs> it won the Oscars, even though it was a game. That's how good yeah. it was. And Will Smith. Well, I was gonna make a Will Smith joke. But I just can't. And Will Smith won. You know, Will Smith actually played Harvey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will uh, Smith actively prays. Kate's gonna leave your yeah. ass, David. <laughs> that was Will, Kate's gonna Will leave Smith's decisions your got that line. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is You're the stupid. boss, Harvey. <laughs> You're the boss, Harvey. It was a G.I. Jane joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like. Kate's gonna leave. <laughs> Kate's gonna leave your ass. <laughs> My CEO. <laughs> My CEO gave me that. Let's go and dig up his fucking, fucking corpse. corpse. I'm not getting another. I'm not one. getting another one. <laughs> no, Shit, look. My heart hurts. Genuinely. Well, look, look. I mean, <sighs> okay. So, season three is a lot of potential, right? But for me, like, I feel I like had. Yeah. Because it's over and done with. But season three, I feel like you could have, and this is kind of, I feel like it should have been more of a. I don't mind AJ getting taken, right? Because I think that gives that gives them kind of a clear goal, like AJ getting taken. And plus, the fact that AJ is a baby won't give you much dialogue, will it? Because he doesn't no. talk. So, like, I think it is a good idea to have him kind of be taken somewhere, and then Clem has to go and yeah. find him. But well, I would have had it as. Well, I think it just surfaces by saying, "This is our, but mostly Christian's premise of what the game could have been and how it could have been better." I think you should just say that. Like, this is what this is like your story. This is much. my story, baby. I had a few things I put in there, but this is mostly him. You did nothing. I, I we had conversations. You did nothing. I'm joking. You gave me the idea to uh, call it The Walking Dead. So there you go. What would you do without me, honestly? I know, but yeah, well, my <laughs> idea would have had. So it kind of starts with season two, right? Because my initial idea for a season two ending would be to kind of include the stuff that was cut, most of the stuff that was cut, and to have the endings of season two be with Luke at Wellington. This is my idea, okay? So you're not a fan of that. But with Luke at Wellington, with Kenny at a different place that's kind of like Wellington, but like kind of like a nice, safe place, or be with yourself at either of those places, and yeah. then you would have season three start. The entire first episode would be dedicated to those endings. And yeah. it would be about an outside force coming in and invading the place and like taking AJ and but, killing. But contextualized. Contextualized. Not just a random group shows up. Maybe you maybe you get there and, and some... Well, I had the, the group... idea of them being like an anarchist group who was trying to like stop. They didn't want civilization to come back. So that's why they target like Wellington yeah. and other like places because they don't want but the, yeah, to like return but, uh, like, to. You get that explained to you. Like maybe some of the characters in your group tell you about it. Yeah. So and then just fucking random. I would have, then yeah, I'd have them show up, and then you would have the first episode would be about them attacking this place, whether it's Wellington or somewhere else. Well, before they attack, you uh, you should talk about the fact that depending on who you chose, Luke or Kenny, you have 
individualistic scenes with them mm. like so scenes where luke's acting like a brother and and um well, I, I spe- include the rom- include maybe a little bit of well i specifically romance. had the idea of you could kind of have to sort of kind of start off the game on, a, on like a light foot you could have maybe clem has a crush on someone at in, the place yeah. and then kenny would be kind of protective of her in that scenario i feel and he'd be kind of like or is this boy, is this boy like, yeah, bothering like, you, Clem? Like, yeah, like protective dad. Yeah, mode. and I feel like Luke would probably sort of tease her about <clears throat> it. Yeah, the teasing brother. And I feel like that would be, even though in both scenarios, whether you're with Luke at one place or Kenny at the other place, even though that would always have the boy who is like Clem's kind of into, you would still have two different responses, responses to it. Yeah. And that would kind of personalise Your experience. choice at the end of season two yeah. as well. And then like, and like... It, it would just it, and you would get a little bit of that kind of play and you get a little bit of talk of how the place is run because i think a lot of people wanted to see what wellington was like yeah i mean i did like what was what was what was life like there because like obviously it was like a massive place people wanted to go to what was life like there so you get to see a little bit of that in wellington and then you get to see i had the idea of like an abandoned shopping mall to be the other place because it's kind of big you've got like loads of levels you could have like people living in the different shops, kind of setting up their own shops, yeah, kind of thing. Cool. Like, and there's a lot of zombie movies that have like abandoned malls. So I was thinking that could be kind of a good idea. Yeah, and you could have it almost be a reflection of the ski lodge, because you know mm. in the ski lodge they had like the Christmas lights and everything. You could have it where they have the luxury of having the lights on. You yeah. could maybe see people like all had like backup storage and stuff. Yeah, you could see like people playing baseball or like football or something like that, to like kind of like ramp up. Oh, things have been good. Yeah. So you could say that Clementine's almost been softened. A little bit so that when it comes when the like the f- the threat comes it's even more like oh fuck yeah like her, yeah she's out of her element going to an end. so then they attack and then i would have that episode kind of be about like trying to kind of frantically kind of survive this attack and you get to see all this shit going down her crush would get killed i know sad yeah but uh and i think luke or, luke or well, luke and kenny would that would be. my idea would be have to i think and even though, like, you'd probably be upset that they died that early, you feel like it would be good, it would be good to have a full episode of them. And... They, think about it this way: they died in the first episode of season three, regardless, but they were confined to one scene. Well, mm. Luke wasn't there, but you know what I mean. And like, I would like to have those, and I don't want to die at the very end of episode one. Very end, very and have end. them like sacrifice emotional death, themselves. Emotional death, saving Clem and AJ yeah. in different scenarios depending on Kenny. Or and even even ignoring, like, my alternate uh, season two ending. Or our alternate season two ending, where it's where it's Luke and Kenny are the last ones. You could still have Jane do something like this. I feel. Yeah, she could be a teasing sister. Yeah, and like, and I just think I think we just had the idea of Luke because we were like on the rift of rewriting yeah, season yeah. two. But like, it would be it's because I feel film for so many people it was so jarring to just have five minutes less than five minutes of context as to what happened. Well, it's so disappointing. You play you play season three. Because you were, you liked the last game and you mm. want a continuation and then you don't get that. Mm. Whereas this version would mean that you do. And I would have I would have had like uh, <clears throat> they kind of come out and like everything is completely destroyed and Clementine's crying and AJ's been taken and then the cliffhanger of the episode is that she kind of finds a new group and this new group is made up of like people whose settlements have been destroyed by this like anarchist group and they're kind of in like a bunch of trailers driving across the American wilderness looking for revenge and then each person in the group has their own reason <clears throat> for going after them so maybe one guy in the group's got his like his his children got kidnapped or someone had their like husband killed and you'd kind of learn yeah. all the trauma well, of everyone this, this in the is group where you'd meet like david and kate's like characters yeah this is where you would characters, meet these may- types maybe them or maybe characters like them yeah that follow a similar and premise. then you would have then I, and I would, I would also have it kind of set in the american west you could kind of have like a western style Make ha, deal with new things because season two was about the cold. Winter, yeah. You could do season three about like warmth and like lack of water. <clears throat> yeah, and add yeah, add environmental factors. And you could have it be kind of a road trip because I feel like a good a big a good part of Walking Dead is kind of the journey to a new location. Is, What's yeah. the problem with season three is, is now is that you end up in Richmond and then you basically stay there for yeah, looking. Like you look at the same one, environments. Season one it was Savannah. Season two it was Wellington. Season mm. three, you just get there in like episode yeah. two or something. Because, because uh, yeah, you don't get to Wellington until like the very yeah. last thing. Well, I mean, se- season four is the school, but that's just so well done that it doesn't matter. Mm. Or does it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Good to get a definitive answer. <laughs> on that. But uh, but that 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 was that was our idea 
of it anyway. And look, I've yeah. I've I've written notes. It can, it can go far from there. Yeah, uh, Skybound. You know, Telltale. Call me up. You know, I know. I know you just. I know you're just gonna message me directly and be like, "Listen, we're gonna throw out everything that all our writers wrote and just restart Bring the back entire Telltale. thing." Bring back Telltale is back. Oh yeah, it is. But yeah. like, it's you the know. first project. They're like, listen. Rewriting The Walking Dead. Season well, three two, remade. Re- remaking season two and three. Yeah. Well, not two, yeah, two yet, partially. I suppose, Only yeah. the Luke thing, though. Keep everything else, like. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like I said, I was writing a fanfic season, for a while. Yeah, mainly season three. Yeah. Season four can be the same, because that's fucking brilliant. Get rid of season four. Season four is weird. Um, but that, those were ideas, anyway. Yeah, that was kind of a. They're very tangent. good ideas. That's, uh, they're so good. They're such good ideas that I don't know why the fuck that didn't even cross their mind to do it. i mean i guess they did were just like tired of i guess they just didn't want to do a clementine story or they just didn't want to commit to how i don't know no house the place no oh, house of course yes house that's such a dead you're joke. an idiot well i've they put the 18 oh, on batman God. i think fuck talking about season three is exhausting i'm tired already i feel like i want to go to bed it has been an hour and a half but that's pretty good Wait, so how long was season two? Like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right, though. Yeah. Sounds about right. But yeah, anyway. So it almost parallels the amount of care they put into each season. Yeah. Season three was like, what, three and a half hours? Season four was four hours? This is one and a half. Yeah, they Makes only sense. they only worked on the game for one and a half hours. Yeah. So you got to respect it. Yeah, that's it. That's so with it. that in mind, it's actually very impressive. <clears throat> yeah. But no, uh, that's, 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 that's almost like Jake Paul when he's like, we wrote this in one day. <laughs> and he's like he's expecting people to be like yeah, well, yo you wrote yeah, this in yeah, one yeah, we, day we can tell. it's like really yeah but yeah right, that's yeah, that's up, that's up. season three and uh i'm just wrapping up some presents if, here if there is anyone listening anyone you must have no life and bro. you like <laughs> you deadass have no, no life no they do well they're listening to this bro. they do have their have a life and i appreciate they listen to an hour and a f- hour and 40 of like shitting on the season three. schizophrenic <laughs> ramblings if anyone anyone is watching this and you like season three Give us a long paragraph. I don't comment. think I don't think anyone who would like it would, would watch, watch this far. Well, it depends how you. It depends what you title. Because as soon as you heard, you could title it like, "Oh, just season three review." Maybe they think they like it. Well, wait. They watch it and then they see that instantly we don't like it, and then they, they do their rambling comment. No, they're probably click, 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 as soon as they heard us go like, just like sigh out and just go like. Anyway, we're talking about it. They go, <laughs> okay. I know, I like the game, so I'm not even going to bother engaging. Can with you imagine this. if they just saw like the length of the other ones as well. Yeah, four out. <laughs> that is going to be funny. <laughs> when you kind of see, like, the... Uh, you see the runtime time comparison. Yeah. you got, like, three hours, four yeah. hours, hour and a half. Oh, no. Mostly a lot... There's some dead noise needs to be yeah. edited out. But, yeah, that's season three. That's season three. And we'll do season four at some point. Nice. See you in the next video. <laughs>